In this Luminar AI photo editing tutorial, I'm going to share with you how we can remove these people here and how we can use some of Luminar's AI and slider based tools to enhance the whole photo. And then we're going to dive a little deeper into how to use local masks to really bring out the best in your photos. Let's get into it. Thanks so much for all your positive feedback on sending through imagery for me for the Anthony edits your photos videos. But this is the one that we'll be working on in this particular video. This was sent in by John Millington and he wrote to me saying, I've just watched one of your photo recovery videos and was very impressed with both your editing skills and power of Luminar. Well, thank you very much, John. Um, do you think you could improve this image of Ashness Bridge in the Lake District, ideally by removing the people who decided to have their lunch on the bridge at just the wrong moment? How that's just really inconsiderate of those people. They should have stayed hungry. I've tried several times using Lightroom with no real success, John. So let's have a look whether we can use Luminar to get rid of these people and then what we can do in terms of an edit for this particular photo. Before you start editing any of your photos, I always think it's a good idea to actually visually analyze the photo yourself before you start relying on AI to do anything. And as John has correctly pointed out, the people really are a big eyesore. They don't need to be there on that bridge. But there's other things such as the branches, these little twigs coming up in the foreground. They're very distracting. They're distracting breaking through the line of the bridge here. And that's the sort of thing that ideally, if you can in camera, capture it with a better frame. So maybe if John had have taken a couple of steps to the right, that would have put this particular branchy area out of shot on the left or by coming forward by another meter or so, perhaps the camera would have actually been level with these branches and the lens would be fo photographing beyond the branches so they wouldn't actually be in the shot in the first place. And this is a personal thing for me, but I will always, if there's people there, I will just wait until they're gone or we look as though they're close enough that potentially we could just say to them, hey guys, any chance, I really wanna get a shot of this bridge, is there any chance you could just maybe shuffle over to the left just really quickly? And normally I find people are very obliging if you approach them with politeness and with kindness. And if you can do things like that and get things much better, much cleaner in camera, it's gonna save you a lot of trouble in post-production. I know what camera gear I'm using, but sometimes I forget what my particular settings were. So sometimes it's a good idea to have a refresher just by looking down in this bottom right-hand corner here by clicking on the eye icon there. And that just enables us to get a little bit more information as to what John photographed this with. So he's on a Canon EOS M ISO 100. So we ha should have a nice clean file in terms of limited digital noise. We're at 24 millimeters. Now, not that that's going to affect how we edit the photo, but it just helps, particularly if you're a new photographer, just to get a sense of, okay, what, what does a 24 millimeter lens look like? What's that going to do to my photos? We shot at F16, so we should have a nice amount of sharpness right from the front to the back of the image. Image, and the shutter speed was 1 25th of a second. That is a long shutter speed if you're hand holding, but if you've got uh, stabilization in your lens and in the camera body, it's not so much of a big deal. Or if you're on a tripod, uh, that's irrelevant. But if I zoom in here, we can see that we're, we're pretty sharp in this image. Just needs to render as you move around the screen, but that's a really nice level of sharpness right from front to all the way in the back of the image. Okay, so let's start our edit and let's start by seeing if we can't get rid of these people here. We could jump into the erase tool and see if the eraser could just get rid of these people. But based on the fact that they're taking up such a large area here for the AI to try and recreate road bricks, the shape of the bridge, I think it's gonna to be too much of a tall order for it to do it. We can zoom to 100%, but I'd like to actually come in even closer. Let's go to 200. And rather than go with the erase tool, I'm actually gonna go straight to what I actually prefer, which is the clone and stamp tool. And if you haven't used this tool before, let me just explain quickly how it works. Basically, you click on an area that you want to sample, and that puts a little dot there. And now we can basically steal from this part of the image here and then begin to paint it where we, wherever we want to basically. And if you want to resample, you just hold the Alt key or Option on a Mac and then just begin painting from there. You can always just keep resampling from different areas. And that's a good idea as well. You don't just wanna click in one place and start sampling and then paint everything from there. 
because that repetition that you'll be creating in your um, duplicated area, that's very, very visible to the human eye. We're very good at spotting patterns and that will just smack of somebody who's used the clone and stamp tool straight away. Or even if people don't know what tool would have been used, they'll spot that there's something fishy going on. So for just removing those two branches there, if I just show you before and after, we've got rid of those. And although by no means is that a perfect clone and stamp that I've done so far, that just shows you the technique that we're going to use. If you want to use a slightly bigger brush, you can do that and just start painting. Look, see you later, guy. You should have had your lunch somewhere else, pal. And then we can sample from the uh, top of the bridge line there as well. Paint over his head. And because we have no end to the bridge here, painting over this bit, that's going to be a little more tricky, just painting over who I can only assume is his wife. But we'll, we'll give this a go. We'll get rid of her first. We're going to deal with the feet in a minute. I'm going to make a much smaller brush, and that will allow me to create more of a hard edge on the bridge. Let's just get rid of her there. And again, I'm going to go even harder with the edge of the brush here. And that's just going to allow me to kind of create a false edge. Okay, so we're heading in the right direction. And then if there's areas that you're not very happy with, you can just go back over it from somewhere else. If I wasn't doing a video on this, I'd probably be spending a little bit more attention on this and doing it with just a little bit more care. Now, if you want to move to a new area on your picture, you just hold the spacebar key and that allows you to then click and drag the picture around. With the clone and stamp tool, you can just take things as far as you want to. So if you found things like the little odd leaves that were scattered around were a little bit distracting visually, you could remove those if you want to but we're just gonna kind of leave it here, I think. Hopefully that's given you a good understanding of how this tool works, and that is enough of a demonstration. So let's just leave that there, he says, as he carries on removing annoying things that are visually distracting. Okay, let's just zoom to fit to screen. And now I've zoomed out, you can see that this darker bit of brickwork here is kind of repeated. So I think we need to actually sample from somewhere completely different and just get rid of one of those. And if you do it with a soft enough brush, things just blend into each other. And you know, that's good enough. For the purposes of this particular photo, that's good enough. And once you're happy with it, just close the tool down. And that is then applied. And we can look at our before with the people having their lunch. And then they're gone before and after. Although I didn't do it here, I would recommend just trying the Arrays tool first because for less complicated objects, it normally does a very good job. So for example, I mentioned getting rid of leaves. You can use the Arrays tool and I'm sure that would 99 times out of 100 do a perfect job for that. But for this more complex removal, that clone and stamp tool is perfect because it gives you the control to actively select where you want to sample from and the elements of the photo that you want to replace the people with. So if you guys have watched any of my videos before, you'll know that one of the first things I like to do is jump into the Enhance AI section and just grab the Accent AI slider and just start cranking that all the way to 100. Not that I'm necessarily going to be using that 100 strength, I just think it's a really, really powerful tool for fixing a lot of issues with a lot of photos. So by pushing it to 100, you can see what that tool's doing. It's working on contrast, color, localized contrast, exposure, all sorts of things. And for people who are absolutely brand new to Luminar AI, I would suggest you don't even need to dive into all the other tools. Basically, this one slider, Accent AI, is gonna save you from a multitude of sins with your photography. So in this instance, I find it's actually making things a little bit too busy in this photo, but I do like it to give us just a little bit of a Kickstarter. So let's put it at 39 and move on. I'm not gonna worry about the composition because I actually think this is actually quite a nice frame. 
If we look at the direction of the water here, running to the bottom right of the frame, that's quite nice. You've got two trees either side. You've got one here on the left, one here on the right. That's creating a nice frame. And we've got the sky or the interesting component of the sky nicely framed here. You've just got this darker element at the top, which is basically just holding this brighter part into the frame. So I think John's done a nice job of the composition. So we'll move on. The light panel is really important, so let's jump in here and have a look what we can do. For those of you who are under the misconception that Luminar AI is completely artificial intelligence driven um, and that's all it does, yes it does some amazing creative things with AI and other tools, but at the very heart of the program there is still a very powerful raw editor. So all of these sliders that you see here, and then if I extend these ones, whites, blacks and curves. This panel here, this is what is at the very heart of programs like Lightroom and other raw editors. It's extremely powerful. You don't need to understand it all to get good results, but the key ones are the color temperature, which for the most part, modern cameras get the color temperature pretty accurate, but you can take things in a more creative direction. You can make the decision that you want to cool the image down and make it look like it's colder, or you may want to warm things up and enhance the oranges that are present in the photo. But I actually quite like the color balance exactly how it was. So if you ever move sliders and you think, oh, I want that back where it was before, just double click on the little dot and that will return it to its starting position. The exposure is a powerful slider because that helps you to brighten or darken the photo. But again, I think our exposure is pretty good. What about smart contrast? If we start playing with that, ah, oh yeah, that's pretty cool. There's quite a lot that you can do in here, but just for now, all I'm going to do is just reduce the highlights down because I feel like this area just through here above the bridge and into the sky is just a little bit too bright. All right, let's move on. Now, before I go any further with editing this photo, I just want to go on record saying that I'm editing this in a more creative way. And the way that I'm editing it is not the right way to edit the photo. It is just one way of editing the photo. And the way I edit this right now might be very different to the way that I might choose to edit it tomorrow. And that's one of the reasons I love using Luminar is because it gives you so many creative options and it's so easy to go one way or pivot and go a completely different direction. And because it's all slider based and non-destructive, you're not going to wreck your photo. If you ever want to go back to the beginning, if you ever want to go right back to the start, you can just do that through the history panel. And if you're not sure where that is, that's this little icon here, click history, and we can jump back to any of the changes that we've made so far. But one of the concepts I like to apply when I'm working on any of my photos is trying to err on the side of simplicity. I find visual complexity just a little bit chaotic. And so looking at this photo, it's quite busy. There's a lot going on. So I'm asking myself, OK, how can I simplify this? And one of the things I'm thinking is we've got an autumnal scene in the Lake District, very beautiful, but we're kind of in that point between the yellow and oranges and the greens still being present. What if we were to send the greens more into those orangey tones? So if we come to the color section and we can come into the hues and actually actively grab colors like the green and we could push the greens more towards the yellow. We could push the yellows and take that more towards an orange. So if I go all the way, you can see exactly what it's doing to those yellows there. So I don't want to go too far with it, but I'm just trying to harmonize the color palette a little bit. And now by doing that, I've got more of an orange blue color harmony going on. So if I turn that off and I turn it on, you'll see that we've just neutralized all those greens. We've sent them more towards a yellow orange color palette. If you do like the look of this photo editing software and you don't have it yet, by all means, save yourself some money. I have a discount code, which is at sky 10. And if you use that with the link in the description below, you'll save some money. And also I get a very small commission, which helps me to keep creating free content for you guys. So anyway, let's press on with the editing. From here, what I'm thinking of doing is actually adding a little bit of creative intrigue, creative interest, if you will, uh, by using the sun rays filter as if the sun is just out of frame, but it's kind of bleeding through these brighter bits of clouds. So let's see if we can do that with the sun rays filter. So let's open that and let's crank the amount up because we actually need to see something to work with. And now we can come place sun center and just by dragging this little dot around, you can see what we can do. We can move it and we can actually take it outside of the photo itself. 
So if we had the sun here, it's just not going to look believable. So basically by pushing it up out of shot and then using the mask, which is accessible for just about every tool, we can add mask and now we can just paint this effect in where we want it. So basically we can start to paint across here, let go. And because we're painting with 31% opacity, we're only getting 31% of what we just created. So we can crank that up a little bit more. And now you can start to see that that effect is bleeding into the photo. And if you've gone over areas you don't want to, you can switch to the eraser and we can crank the opacity of the eraser quite high because we want to remove that because we don't want any of those rays appearing where it's dark. We want it to seem like they're just sort of appearing and poking through this brighter bit of cloud here. Now we'll click the eraser again, drop the opacity, and what we're gonna do is create a nice big fat brush here, and we're just gonna feather this off here just so it's softer in the transition. Now I don't really like the look of the beams that are coming through, and that's where we can come and play with the settings. So I might want to increase the number of sun rays, and I think that's quite a cool thing to do. You see those changing there? And what we can also do is actually randomize the rays. So you can have a play around with that until you get to um, a look that you actually like with the rays coming through. Yeah, let's just go with that, that's all good. And one thing that I like to do is add a little bit of the mystical filter. And if I push this far too much to the right, you'll see exactly what it's doing. Now I did get an email from Lee Connell who sent me this photograph here. And I would love to look at that photo for you, Lee, in another video tutorial. But for now, one of the things you asked me was about the Orton effect. And you said that the Orton effect that's inside Luminar, you weren't particularly impressed with the results. And I have to agree, I don't think that the Orton effect filter that's built into this is particularly authentic to the original Orton effect. Uh, but I do actually think that the mystical filter actually gets closer to the Orton effect than the Orton effect filter, ironically enough. So if you're wanting to add just a little bit of more saturation and a soft glow to your photos, and I think this does work quite well for landscapes, the mystical filter is a really good option. So if I turn that off and I turn that on, it's just added a bit of contrast, a bit of mystical intrigue, hence the name, and I think that's pretty cool. Let's have a quick look where we've come from and where we've got to, before and after. Now potentially you could leave that there and say, yeah, I'm happy with that photo, but what I want to do is show you the power of local masking. Let's fit this to screen and let's jump into our local masking section. And what I like to use the local masking feature for is drawing people's attention to certain areas of the photo and taking the attention away from others. So in this instance, I feel like we're a little bit overexposed on the hillside up here and the trees here. So I want to just dull that down slightly. I think there are maybe three sort of areas within this photo that are worthy of our attention. One is most definitely the river and the water flowing through. So I want to increase people's visual attention towards this area. I think another area is now what we've created with the sunbeams coming through here. So that's another area that I'd like people to look at. And the hillside here, I think the orange hues within this area could certainly be enhanced and I think they're a worthy element within the photo. Even this yellow tree here is pretty cool. So let me show you a few techniques for helping to guide the viewer's eye. Let's add a local mask. We'll just come to the basic. All we need to worry about is the basic masks. And the first thing I'm gonna do is actually create a mask that takes our attention away from certain areas. And so by making things darker, that helps. By reducing the contrast, that will also help. By dropping the highlights, that will also help. And at the moment, we're basically creating a flatter version of our photo, a photo that's less interesting, less vibrant. And you'd think, why would you do that? Well, I'll show you. Basically, we're gonna erase that effect from the key areas. And by contrast, those areas are gonna pop so much more. So I'm gonna erase it from the sky, I'm gonna erase it from that hillside there, and I'm certainly gonna erase it from the bridge and using my left bracket key, I'm gonna decrease the size and remove it from the water here as well. And I wasn't at full opacity, so now I can build that effect up slightly more. Certainly wanna increase interest on that tree, make sure that we've got full interest on that. And if we fail, we want to paint in that effect where we've removed it maybe a little bit too much, we can just switch brushes again and come to the 
section where we're going to paint that back in. I feel like we might be just a little bit bright under there. And if you want to do it with a slightly softer transition and make things just a little bit more believable, what you can do is drop the opacity and just build it up with several strokes. There we go. Okay, let's turn this off. And now let's turn it back on just to get a sense of what exactly we've done. And if you feel like you want to change things further, you can do that. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is actually enhance the river itself. So let's add another local mask. Let's add a basic again. And this time we kind of want to go the opposite way to what we just did. So we're going to brighten things up. So your eye will naturally go to the brighter parts of an image. We can add some contrast as well. Your eye will also go to areas of more contrast. We'll leave highlights where they are. Maybe we'll boost the shadows just ever so slightly. And let's grab the structure AI and just see what that does. Okay, if I push that to 100, you can see that this is increasing the kind of busyness in the photo. Um, I actually quite like what it's doing on the brickwork and on the bridge. So maybe I'll come back and add an additional adjustment mask that is a little more heavy handed on structure. Uh, if I push the saturation, I wonder if we can get any more coloration in the river. We can't because it's pretty much um, a gray running river at the moment, but we can increase the saturation just slightly and anything, any leaves and foliage that are around that are gonna show up a little bit more. Okay, so let's get the paintbrush and we're at 41% opacity and I'm just gonna start painting that effect just where I want it. So you can use the left bracket key to reduce the size of your brush and you can use the right bracket key to increase the size of it. And if I keep having little voice cracks, do excuse me, I had a bit of a shout the other day and it's really strained my throat. Okay, let's turn this off and let's turn it on. And there you can see we've started to add a little bit more life and a bit more intrigue to the bridge and the river. If you feel like you want to enhance the blue element through the sky so that we have more of that blue orange nice complementary color combination what we can do is add another local mask basic again and this time we're going to grab the color temperature and if I start taking this towards the left you'll see that we're pushing more blues into the image I might want to control the highlights not let them get a little too carried away on me and what I'm going to do is actually paint this more bluey effect around the edges and again, that's just gonna help guide our viewer's eye towards the center of the photo. So let's get the paintbrush, uh, opacity 41. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. And now I'm just gonna paint by stroking that over the different areas. I'm gonna paint it over the hill in the background just so that, that moves away from gray and becomes a little more blue. Uh, I could paint some of that blue down here, but I've done some other things like reducing the highlights and I don't really want to do that to the stream. But I may, with a lower opacity, just want to introduce some of that blue just around the edge of the frame. It's just going to help hold our viewer's eye more in the center of the frame. All right, let's look at our before. Okay, so this is very much a snap straight out of camera. And we'll look at our after. And we've hopefully created something that's got a little bit more impact our eye is certainly more drawn to key areas such as the river here. We've got a nice bit of interest going on in the sky with some sunbeams coming through. And our attention is much more to the curvature of the interest areas from here in the sky, down here to the bridge, and then through with the river there. So our viewer's eye is kind of staying in this zone. And by reducing the contrast, turning things a little bluer around the edges, that just helps to hold our viewer's eye in this zone here. So again, let's look at our before. Quite a busy photo and not too much going on in the way of having an impactful image, in my opinion. It's a nice capture, don't get me wrong, but hopefully for John, I've created a more artistic edit. As I say, I might do this a completely different way if I was to edit it tomorrow. One thing I haven't addressed was the brightness value on the hill here. So what I might do is just add one more local mask. By now, hopefully you're getting a feeling for just how powerful these can be. And if I push a little bit more warmth into that and we'll just start playing with some of these sliders until I feel like I'm getting something a little more impactful over here. Certainly by increasing that contrast, we're increasing more saturation and getting a little bit more pop and vibrancy to those hills there. I might grab the structure and just see whether increasing a bit of structure might help. Okay, maybe just a little bit of that. I might just ease that in just ever so slightly. 
and the fact that the whole image right now doesn't look great, that's fine. I wasn't looking at that. When I was making my adjustments over here on the right hand side, my eye was purely focused on this hillside just here where I'm moving the brush at the moment. Because I know that I'm now going to have my paintbrush and I'm going to click and just start painting that in. So this effect that we just created, I'm currently painting with 31%. And then I'll let go and straight away you can see that pop just with a little bit more of that dynamic look to that hill. Same again, one more stroke, boom. And I might do the same with that tree there that we spoke about before, boom. I really think that's helping the hillside here because it was just looking a little bit washed out. Um, perhaps the same with the top of these trees here as well. They're just looking a little bleached out. So there we go, we just bring a little bit more life and color back into them as well. Just to check we're doing the right thing there. Let's turn that off, turn it on. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now it's very possible I've gone too far with this. That often happens when I'm recording videos particularly because a lot of my brain power is actually going into explaining what I'm doing and talking things through. And I swear that just takes away from my visual acuity, just paying attention to the actual aesthetics of things sometimes. But if you feel, feel like you've gone too far with things, what you can do is always grab that slider down in the bottom right and go, okay, this was my before minus the people because uh, we don't we don't want to have, say, 50% opacity of the people. So Luminar is smart enough to know that if we're changing the value of the edit that we've done, we don't want to reintroduce the people. But everything else we can bring back or remove in degrees. So we could settle around somewhere around that sort of like 80% mark and go, okay, I'm happy with that before after a little bit more subtle, a little bit more believable, I'm happy. Let's export this so we can email it back through to John. Okay, export and we want to save photo to disk. I'm gonna save this as a JPEG. I'm gonna call it John Millington Anthony's edit. We don't wanna change the size. We'll keep it exactly as it is. The color space is sRGB is perfect and the quality, that's entirely up to you, but I don't really like to save things under a quality of 80. In this case, I'm happy. I just hit export and Luminar will go to work doing all the final computations on this photo and spit it out into a folder for me. So a big shout out to John. Thank you so much for sharing this photo with us. I really hope you've enjoyed watching this edit. If you're somebody watching this and you've got some value from this video, please do me a favor and leave me a thumbs up. Also, if you've got questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you'd like me to edit one of your photos in the next video, please share it through to anthonyeditsyourphotos at gmail.com and who knows, the next video could be dedicated to you. Thanks so much for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video.